hope you're all well welcome back to another video thanks for being here if you are new probably not but if you are new please subscribe it's free it just means that you'll know when i upload a new video which is normally every sunday not every week but most sundays i have a new video it's a thursday i'm gonna be at home today sorry another home vlog i think i'm gonna go to town next week i'm actually excited for that I think on Wednesday I'm gonna like book out a day in town. I've done the tube like once or twice. I still don't feel like 100% about it. I think if I wasn't pregnant, I'd be fine with it, but I'm just trying to be like a bit more careful than I normally would be. I think I'm like almost going into my third trimester, which is when, you know, I need to be a bit more careful. But I think I'm gonna go off peak on the tube, go into town, and I just wanna like look around some shops and go for lunch. I think especially when it comes to like buying baby stuff, it's just not as fun online. It feels very much like you're just like running errands, you know, where I want it to be an enjoyable experience. I've only bought one thing for this baby so far. I feel like I'm not really like bonding that much just because it's so hard to like find the time to think about him. Sorry, sorry little guy, that sounds mean, but Grey is like here. She's physically here and I can see her. So it's very easy to concentrate on her and kind of forget about him. So I'd like to have a little me day, and do some little baby shopping, but also just like buy some nice clothes for myself or have lunch somewhere and, I think that's what I'm gonna do. If I go off peak, it should be fine. And town is normally not that busy, like midweek, especially in August, so many people are away and stuff. So that's the plan for next week. And I think I'll try and vlog that day. I haven't vlogged like out and about for ages, so that'll be weird. But today is a home day. I'm just getting ready. My hair's feeling a little bit fluffy today. So I'm just using the Philip Kingsley Elasta Styler five in one treatment. So I'll just do like one and a half pumps of that. It is gonna be a vlog today, but I think I might kind of semi make it a favorites video as well. I know people don't really like when I just sit and talk through my favorite products. So my memory card just got full, sorry about that. I'll casually just throw some favorites in throughout this video, beauty favorites, style favorites, TV favorites, and I should stop saying that word because I can never say it properly. All right, I've got so many gray hairs. I've got like individual gray hairs, can you see? But it's not worth like going for a hair color appointment because I don't want my actual hair colored. I'm gonna have to find someone who will just happily just kind of like color the individual ones. I don't want one of those touch up sticks because then you have to do it every day and it's like not permanent, it's a bit annoying. Anyway, hair done. I am, oh, I'm feeling quite like big today like oof, a bit out of breath i've actually been feeling quite good in this pregnancy i think i've been quite lucky i think compared to how i felt with gray overall i feel better i've actually got an ear infection at the moment which is bizarre and so so painful like kids and babies get ear infections quite often and i will never ever underestimate how awful it is from now on i feel so sorry for them it's agony I've got this like antibiotic spray that I have to put in my ear. It hasn't started working yet though. It's a bit better now, but in the evening, it's so painful. It feels like my head is going to explode or my like eardrum's gonna explode. It hurts all the way down the side of my face. And when I chew food, I can't really chew food. It's really painful. I've never really had an ear infection before. It's bizarre. But apart from that, I'm feeling good. Um, I was talking to my managers yesterday and they were like, you look good. I, it just reminded me that when I was pregnant with Grey, I had like cysts on my eye and I just, my face, I just, I didn't look like me. I just looked like I was struggling the whole time. So apart from having a much bigger bump this time, I think I kind of feel and look like me still, which is quite nice. Rich has popped out with Grey this morning. He's also gone to take my camera film to get developed. I'm so excited. Like when you've come to the end of a camera film, I just, I can't wait to see because it's gonna be photos from such a long period of time. So I'm really excited for that. They, I don't get them printed straight away. I get them to we transfer made digital copies and then I'll decide if I want any printed. So really excited for that. I've just brought my skincare over here to do it while chatting to you guys. I'm gonna be using this, which is definitely one of my favorites. I did a job with Vichy, this is not part of the job. It's the Vichy Mineral 89. I've used about two thirds of it. It's just a really lovely, juicy hyaluronic serum. My skin's actually, oh my God, it actually hurts my face when I rub. My skin's been quite good recently, which is nice. It just feels kind of normal. Nothing drastic, no huge crazy spots like I had in my last pregnancy. But actually I got that postpartum as well, so 
that could definitely change. And then my trusty Aven Skin Recovery Cream. I love this. This is really great if you get eczema around your face. It tends to just like keep it at bay for me. I think this one is discontinued, but they did get in touch saying that they are redoing it in, it's got a slightly different name, slightly different packaging, a slightly different formula, but not too different. Hopefully just improved. So I will let you know when I try that and what I think of it. It's just, this is the one I always recommend. If people just say, I want a good moisturizer, that's gentle, good for sensitive skin, good for like any dry patches around your eyes or lips. Ouch. This is the moisturizer I recommend. That's it. Serum moisturizer. I no longer need or want a six step skincare routine. I'm gonna put some makeup on. Oh, this desk, this beauty desk, is driving me a bit crazy. I'm gonna sort it out today. First of all, it's a mess. This happens often, mainly because Grey likes to play with my makeup, but also just because I'm a bit lazy and I throw stuff back in like no organization so i definitely need to sort this out but also and i knew this would happen when we ordered this desk it's so hard to open and close and i remember saying to rebecca when we did the bedroom is that desk gonna be annoying to open and close like my ikea one was so smooth but my west elm desk is quite smooth but most drawers i find especially if they've got two handles and you do two hands they're quite stiff this one is so stiff to open and close and the legs are so wobbly on it. It's such a shame because it wasn't a cheap table. I find it really annoying. So I'm not going to change it because it is what it is, but it's, I think maybe it's too full. I think it might be easier. So I'm going to clear it out. What should I use today? I'm going to give one of these new NARS correcting concealers a go. So these are their normal concealers. I don't tend to use the liquid ones just because my skin prefers, uh, where is my concealer? I prefer the soft matte concealer. I've almost used this one up. I've reached the bottom. Just a cream concealer agrees with my skin better. If I'm gonna react to an under eye product, it's probably going to be, so I've got hair on my chin, it's probably gonna be liquid. So I used to love this when my skin was not crazy. It's a great concealer, but now I've just gotta be a little bit careful. But I do really wanna try out these. These are the Radiant Creamy Concealer Correctors. They're in slightly different packaging. They've got this little window on the side that shows the color, it comes in four shades um, that go from light to deep. And the idea of a corrector, if you don't know what a corrector is, is it's kind of like a peachy tone that cancels out and corrects any like blue purple tones under your eye and it's the blue and the purple that makes you look tired. So if you put peach onto bluey purples it kind of cancels it out and makes you look less tired so that's a good trick if you have dark circles. I've got the shades light and medium here. I feel like I'm somewhere in between at the moment but let's try light. Oh my god I'm so out of breath. <laughs> Instead of a doe for applicator, it's got this kind of little paintbrush, which is quite cute, but I'm not going to apply it straight on my eye because that's that's why I get the kind of ex marie reaction. I'll just put it on the back of my hand and then tap it. Can you see it's quite different to a concealer. Oh, that's good. Definitely getting rid of some of that kind of bluey. My dark circles aren't that bad at the moment because I have a two year old that sleeps all night, but we all know that's gonna change very soon. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put a really thin layer because I am gonna put my normal concealer on top. I like using my fingers to blend these sort of products in, like my base products rather than a brush because the warmth of your finger kind of melts the product into the skin better and stops it from just sitting on top of your skin. Wait, I really need to get my breath back. My lung capacity is not what it used to be before I was pregnant. Soft matte concealer, nougatine, and I'm just gonna press, see that's a much different color, although this is probably a bit light for me at the moment. I'm just gonna press that. I put this under my eye, around my nose, on my chin. I don't go for like a fully perfect base anymore like I don't mind I like just my skin looking quite natural um I also I find that my Fenty Beauty bronzer kind of smooths things out when I put it on top I think our loft conversion is kind of starting tomorrow 
like the scaffolding is going up I think which is going to be interesting to live with for quite a while. I don't really know how it's all going to go. Like I'm excited but I'm nervous. It's going to be very loud. It's going to be very dusty. Like, I don't know how Grey's going to nap. I think just getting in and out of our house with scaffolding all over it is going to be interesting. I don't know I've never really lived through any sort of renovation before because we didn't live here when we did the last one so it would definitely be interesting. But I am excited for things to get going. We, we have to like redo part of the roof which is so boring and so expensive. They found some asbestos in the tiles like really really low grade so nothing dangerous nothing to worry about I know I'm pregnant and I've looked into it it's really really low grade and only an issue if the tiles are broken we do have to redo that part of the roof when we do the loft so that's added on a lot of money <laughs> I think that's what we're having first like we're having all of those tiles removed by like a specialist company these things happen when you do renovations, always leave extra budget for annoying things that you just didn't expect to happen. Love, love, love my Fenty bronzer so much. We're also starting, I think next week, we've got a guy here who's building a wardrobe for Grey. Her new bedroom, when she moves, we want to move her kind of as soon as possible because her current bedroom is right at the bottom of where the new staircase for the loft will go. And I just don't want her to be that close to all the renovations, like with all the dust and everything, I don't think it will be good for her. So we're gonna move her like sooner rather than later. Um, but we wanna get this wardrobe built so she has some storage space for her clothes and stuff. And then I think we're gonna leave the rest of the room and just put her, put her cot and everything else in there and not really make, you know, do anything else to it. We'll come back to it maybe next year and like do it properly. I think that's the plan. So there's a lot going on next week. This is the NARS Freedom Blusher, which is very pretty. Oh my gosh, something that has definitely been a favorite of mine. I'm not gonna put it on today because I don't think I really need it with the sort of look I'm going for, but the Vive Skin Dew Glow Multitasker. So this is Jamie Genevieve's brand. I think she's done so well with her makeup brand. It's all the products that I've tried so far have been brilliant. This is um, a highlighter, a liquid highlighter. Comes in a little tube, bit messy to use, I guess. I don't love the applica applicator, it's just like a squeezy tube, but you can just tap it on with your finger and it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous glow. Maybe I will put a bit on because I can't really talk about something without showing you. I have to be so, so gentle not to squeeze out too much, but you could use this anyway. You could use it on your face, but you could also use it on like your collarbones if you were on holiday and you wanted a bit of a glow. Let me come closer so you can see all my facial hair and just tap that right onto the cheekbones, not too high, not too low, just under the orbital bone. And can you see how it just blends in so beautifully with your skin and just looks like a really natural glow. It's not like how, you know, like the old, like the Becca highlighters we used to all love. They were really like, do you remember like champagne pop? Everyone was obsessed with that. That was just like, whoa, strong powder highlight. Like, not into that anymore. This is just a really lovely, creamy, like it is a proper, like it is like a woe highlighter, but not, not like a powdery sit on your skin way. It looks more just like a nice sweaty holiday glow. <laughs> I love it. So nice. It will last me such a long time because I have to use such a tiny amount. Just gonna brush and fill in my brows. And then I've got a brow gel to show you. I have been really enjoying this. It's from Bare Minerals. It's their Strength and Length Serum Infused Brow Gel. I really like the brush. It's kind of like a plasticky brush. Um, wait, can you see that? Plasticky brush that just grips onto the brows really well. I kind of do upward strokes and then just try and like get the excess hairs to sit nicely. And it tends to kind of keep them in place but without making them too like stiff and sticky and like, I don't get like white bits in my brows. So that's a really, really nice brow gel. Also like that it's kind of little and you could just chuck it in your handbag. If you have unruly brows that go all over the place like me, that's quite handy. I'm gonna use the new Glossier Solar Paint on my eyes. This is actually a bronzer, but I don't love it as a bronzer. So instead I've been using it as an eyeshadow, kind of liquidy eyeshadow. Because I don't want it to go to waste, but I'm just not massively keen on it as a bronzer. But it's a really nice eyeshadow. Just adds like a bit of a bronzy shadow. I actually think it's way more of an eyeshadow than a bronzer. I wonder how many people will end up buying it and using it 
that purpose. I think I'm just gonna do that. I don't want any more than that today. Beauty Pie Uber Volume Boost. Actually, I would say this is a favorite. Not all of these products I'm mentioning are favorites. I'm kind of just saying as I go, if they are. Uh, I feel like I've been using this for quite a while. It's probably almost getting to the end of its life. And it's just a really nice everyday mascara. Nothing too dramatic, nothing too natural, just a good in between. But I have mentioned before that I've got very easy lashes, so I tend to kind of, most mascaras work on me. But this is the sort of brush that I really like in a mascara. I'm not gonna put lipstick on. I have really been enjoying uh, the NARS Afterglow Lip Balms and the Glossier New Lipsticks Villa. That's a really nice color. I've been getting the craving. I think, who I was watching Estee's video, she was wearing like a bright red orangey lipstick and I was like, oh, I really wish I could wear that. Like this one from Glossier, Coupe. Coupe or Coupe? <gasps> oh, it looks so nice, but I just haven't worn a lipstick like this in so many years because of my kind of eczema. I'm so worried that it will like trigger things and I'll get it again. Also, I just think it just doesn't suit me anymore because I'm not used to seeing myself with like a bright lipstick on. I'm not gonna do it today, but maybe one day soon if I'm feeling brave, I'll give it a go. For now, I'm leaving it as that. Sorry, you can't really see what it looks like because I've, the light's all funny and blue. Does that help? Not really. I feel like all of that effort looks like I'm not really wearing much, but this is the kind of makeup look I've been enjoying recently. I'm very, very hot. My office is a total mess because we've had to clear the loft of all the stuff. Luckily, friends of ours have let us put some stuff in their loft, but we've got like extra stuff here, suitcases. And then this stuff is all the things I had to empty in this cupboard. So this is what's going. <gasps> I love these shelves and these cupboards are so nice, but Grey needs this room as a bedroom and she's gonna love it. So I'm happy for her. <laughs> um, we're gonna make this into one big wardrobe. I think I'm gonna do tongue and groove, which look, could look cool on the doors. And yeah, these were the paints samples that I was picking from, from Lick. I really like the idea of a green. I think it's a very kind of calming, color for a bedroom. Yeah, I looked into it and everybody said that green is a very calm color. So it seems like a good color for a kid's bedroom. It's not like super girly and pink. It's kind of not too boring and beige because the room's like decent size. So I feel like we could have a bit of color. I think what I'm gonna do, so that we're only painting the wardrobes for now because the guy who we're doing it, he's like, he hasn't got time to like paint the whole room. So we're just gonna paint the wardrobe and then I think paint the bedroom at a later date. And I might, I'm gonna do the whole wardrobe one color because it's too hard on tongue and groove to kind of split the color halfway. But then I think I might do the rest of the room where the color only goes halfway up the wall. Haven't quite decided yet. This is Lick Green 01, which I absolutely love. And this is Green 09. I actually love this one as a color, but for this room, I think this one would be better because I think if this is everywhere or like on a big wardrobe, it's gonna to be too much and too dark. And I just think Green 09 is a bit more subtle and a bit more calm. It's got undertones of gray and yellow in it, which will be great because we've got this gray carpet, which we're hopefully, hopefully changing one day, but for now it's staying. And over there, <laughs> we've got the yellow arch, which I will probably get rid of one day, but again, for now it's staying. So yeah, I hope that that will look really nice on the wardrobe. These samples are so handy to be able to stick on. When it comes to TV recommendations, I feel like there hasn't been a lot of new good stuff on recently. I'm kind of waiting for a few things to start up again with new seasons. I have been loving watching The Handmaid's Tale, which is on Sunday nights. It's so good, it's so satisfying. It's got to the point in it where I feel like programs never get to that point where it's like really satisfying and you see, oh, I don't wanna ruin it, but it's got to a good bit and I'm, enjoying seeing like where it's gonna go. It's like a, it's very different now to how the rest of it's been. So that's really good. Other than that, I've been watching such rubbish like Love Island, Below Deck. That's kind of what we've been watching as like filler. I don't know why I watch Love Island. It's so bad, but it's just such easy watching and it's almost just like laughable. Sometimes I find in the evening, it's just nice to switch off and watch something easy. Something I did watch, which I would recommend is Clarkson's Farm on Amazon Prime. Disclaimer, I don't really like Jeremy Clarkson. Like, I don't know him personally, but from what I know of him and have seen of him, he's not like my favorite person. I quite like his writing, but I'm not a big like Jeremy Clarkson fan. So even if you're not, I would still recommend it because it's just such 
a funny program. I honestly haven't laughed out loud in so long at a TV program. It's all about this farm which he's owned for years but never done anything to other than like build this amazing house on it. And he decides during like 2020 when COVID happens to kind of take charge and move there and like give farming a real go. I mean, I'm, I don't think the locals in the area are that fond of it but it's very funny i don't know if i just found it funny because my dad has always wanted to like move to the country and have a farm he always talks about it and it's just kind of almost reminds me and like it's funny seeing like a londoner go to the countryside and try to get to grips with all of that it also reminds me of when i go to see richard's family in suffolk and they all just take the piss out of me being such a city girl it's very funny it's also quite interesting i just i really liked it and i think they're doing a second season which i'm really happy about so a bit of light watching if you're into that kind of thing that's kind of all we've been watching really oh i've just started this program on netflix oh what's it called let me just turn on the tv and check it's a baking program this girl gets a team together of like all the best bakers and there's a guy who specializes in chocolate they are amazing the stuff they make so that every week they have a different challenge where someone comes in and challenges them to make something for like a specific event and the stuff they make is insane it's called bake squad it's on netflix it's so good it's just again easy watching nothing like deep and meaningful but if you're into like watching experimental baking and that kind of thing oh i need to tell anna i'm going to tell anna to watch it it's good I'm literally gonna text her now. Are you guys jealous that I have like access to Anna when she's gone offline? <laughs> I feel very privileged to be an IRL friend during this time. Oh, look what Rich brought back for me for lunch. Chicken teriyaki poke bowl. <gasps> Looks delicious. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I just got an email saying my order's been shipped. I ordered quite a while ago now because it takes quite a long time to make this bracelet from a brand called Ot Otiumberg. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but it's a, uh, I got gold plated. You can either get solid gold or gold plated, but I went for gold plated. I don't know. I just thought gold plated is fine. A lot of my jewelry is gold plated and it's absolutely fine. Um, so I went for gold plated. It's a gold chain bracelet and then it says gray. And I just thought it was really nice to just have that on. And then when we have the next one, I'll get one with his name on and that'll just be a cute thing to wear. So I'm excited, I think that's coming tomorrow. But I'm gonna end the video here. I've got quite a lot of stuff to get on with, boring computer stuff. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this little chatty video. Thanks so much for watching um, and I'll see you next week for another one. Bye.